Welcome to Deep Dive Defense. Over here we give rare insights you won't hear elsewhere. Today's video is about a lesser-known Iranian air-to-air -air missile. An unusual one, because it is among the few heavy, long-range air-to-air missiles known to exist in the world. That missile is the Fakur 90B, also designated AIM-F 90B, developed by the Iranian Air Force. Based on the United States AIM-54 Phoenix, this missile represented a key objective of the Iranian Air Force it pursued over several decades. However, it was only in the later 2000s that Iran's missile industry had developed the capacity to produce its own interpretation of the United States Phoenix missile from the 1970s. During the Phoenix's development, the performance requirements for the AIM-54 were so demanding, and the engineering solutions needed to achieve them so complex that the Phoenix became famously known as the $1 million missile, which was an extremely high price for the 1970s. Consequently, a fundamental requirement for Iran's Fakur 90B was an affordable price, achieved through alternative modern technical solutions. To understand the intermediate steps that enabled Iran to develop the Fakur 90B, we must take a look at its history. Like and subscribe if you want to support the channel in the algorithm. Now let's start. In the 1980s Iran-Iraq War, it quickly became evident that Iran's F-14 Tomcat fighters would not enjoy the luxury of launching their Phoenix missiles against Iraqi fighters at will. Highest likelihood of successful interception was the rule for using the precious missile, since the arsenal of US supplied Phoenix missiles had to be preserved as much as possible. In the later years of that conflict, the availability and operational readiness of the Phoenix missiles also decreased drastically. The option to reverse engineer and produce a domestic Phoenix variant was impossible due to Iran's primitive industrial capabilities of that era. As a result, the Iranian Air Force initiated the Sejil program to convert US-made Hawk surface-to-air missiles into air-to-air -air missiles that could be mounted on the F-14 Tomcat. This missile was available in sufficient quantities and would provide the Tomcat with a beyond visual range air-to-air -air missile that could be launched on a much wider scale than was possible with the limited stock of Phoenix missiles. The converted MIM-23 B-Hawk missiles became operational around 1986 as the AIM-23, and the process of integrating that surface-to-air missile with the Tomcat's fire control radar provided Iran with its first experience in modifying radar-guided air-to-air missiles. However, with a maximum range of approximately 50 kilometers, this missile possessed only about one-third of the kinematic performance of the Phoenix missile. Furthermore, it was a semi-active radar homing guided missile, which forced the F-14s to maintain a radar lock on their targets until the moment of impact, similar to their AIM-7 Sparrow missiles. After the war in the 1980s, throughout the 1990s and 2000s, the Iranian Air Force Self-Sufficiency Jihad Organization continued to improve the AIM-23 Sejil, leading to the creation of the AIM-23C variant. The Tomcat's capability to carry two of these 40 to 50 kilometer range medium range missiles provided the Tomcat fleet with a useful weapon against opponents equipped with AIM-7 Sparrow variants and even the high-end AIM-120 AMRAAM, which in its early variants, such as the Dash A, possessed only a slightly longer range. By the late 2000s, responding to a request from Iran's Air Defense Force, the Aerospace Industries Organization had successfully reverse-engineered the Hawk surface-to-air missile, and had put the Iranian Shaheen variant into production for the Mursad surface-to-air missile system. Hence, with the production of the Hawk's M112 rocket motor, a key component became available to Iran's Air Force Self-Sufficiency Jihad Organization and the existence of the Shaheen surface-to-air missile subsequently initiated the Fakur 90 program. This project aimed to create an improvement over the Sejil missile, incorporating the airframe features of the AIM-54 Phoenix to reduce the weight of the 638kg Hawk missile down to the 450kg weight of the Phoenix missile, a mass far more suitable for airborne applications. The resulting missile, designated the Fakur AIM-F90A, would retain the Hawk's semi-active radar guidance system, but these missiles could now be produced from scratch in whatever quantity the Air Force ordered. It hence became Iran's first fully locally produced air-to-air -air missile, with the earlier fatter believed to be just an AIM-9 Sidewinder refurbishment and upgrade. 
However, the Fokker 90A would still possess only one-third of the Phoenix's maximum range, similar to its Sejil predecessor. Also, the lack of an active radar guidance seeker in the face of threats from advanced Amram variants operational in the 2010s meant that Iran's F-14s would remain inadequately armed. This was despite Iran's industry had by then become capable of refurbishing the old but limited quantity Phoenix stocks and returning them to operational service. It was precisely that refurbishment experience, combined with the prior work on Iran's Hawk Sam copy, the Shaheen, which enabled Iran's solid propellant motor industry to commence the project for the M190 motor. A propulsion believed to be modeled on the Mark 60 used on the US AIM 54A Phoenix. This step was more significant than it might initially appear, because the less sophisticated motor of the Hawk missile uses a sustainer that merely maintains a cruise speed of Mach 2.7. The motor of the Phoenix, by contrast, drastically accelerates the missile to more than Mach 4, and places it on a lofted trajectory where aerodynamic resistance is minimized. This feature, common today, was exceptionally difficult to achieve in the 1970s. It required missile components that could endure high G acceleration forces and operate at near hypersonic conditions beyond Mach 4 to steer the missile with its own active radar seeker towards the target. Handling the aerothermal stress those flight conditions cause, required taking technological hurdles like powerful servo actuators, batteries and thermal conductive metal nose tip at its radome. By the mid-2010s however, Iran's missile industry was prepared for that challenge, and the Fakur 90B project was initiated. This time, the goal was to match the kinematic performance of the US Phoenix, and achieve a maximum range of 100 to 150 kilometers. The Iranian Air Force maintains considerable secrecy regarding its air-to-air -air missiles, and further specifics of the Fakur AIM F-90B variant remain unclear. But it may be the first Iranian air-to-air -air missile suited to directly replace the F-14's original Phoenix missile. Up to four missiles can hence be mounted between the Tomcat's two-engine nacelles at its center fuselage. It remains unknown, however, whether this missile possesses an active radar homing seeker, or if it utilizes the F-14's powerful AWG-9 radar system to illuminate targets beyond 100 kilometers to support the Hawk's semi-active radar homing guidance, like the Fakur 90A. The incremental, step-by-step -step development from the 1980s Sejil to the late 2010s Fakur 90B suggests that Iran might only equip the missile with its own active radar homing seeker in another future variant. Yet Iran has already demonstrated its capability to develop such seekers for surface-to-air missile systems, as seen in the Sayyad 2C and the Bavar 373's Sayyad 4B missile. More curiously, Iran is now known to be developing its own variant of the AIM-120 Amram, which incorporates a highly sophisticated active radar homing seeker. Given the modern capabilities of high-tech jammers and decoys, Possessing a highly robust seeker is a key requirement for pursuing the development of such an air-to-air -air missile. The small aperture size of such active radar homing seekers, combined with the low available power, necessitates the highest degree of sophistication to maintain effectiveness against countermeasures. If an active radar seeker lacks the necessary power and sophisticated electronic counter-countermeasures capabilities required for modern aerial engagements, it has a critical disadvantage. One solution is to rely on the Hawk missile's famously robust semi-active radar seeker, which is volume produced at low cost for Iran's Mursad SAM system, and has been continuously improved by Iran. Therefore, it could be the most straightforward and cost-efficient solution for the Fakur 90B. Certainly, losing the fire-and-forget capability, which enables the launching aircraft to turn away from the target, is less of a disadvantage for a long-range missile with a range of over 100 kilometers than it is for a shorter-ranged medium-range air-to-air missile. All of the developmental efforts on the Fakur 90B could hence ultimately result in a future variant potentially featuring a Amram-derived sophisticated seeker system and even more extended range. The Phoenix design, originally pioneered by the US Hughes company, possesses an unusual appearance compared to other air-to-air -air missiles for very specific reasons. It is no coincidence that the Russian R-33 and R-37 missiles share the same layout, characterized by a large diameter and a relatively short length. This particular configuration is how the missile accommodates itself on the fighter jet, 
and enables a heavy weight of around 450 kilograms, which is approximately three times the weight of the lightweight US AMRAAM missile. This design means that the Phoenix-type missile layout incorporates an unusually powerful solid propellant motor, but must also handle a relatively high penalty from aerodynamic drag. Consequently, the missile is ideally employed in high-altitude F-pole aerial engagements, where the fighter launches the missile from a very high altitude and at a high initial speed to prevent the missile from first having to climb through the dense lower layers of the atmosphere to reach its lofted cruise trajectory. For these reasons, missiles of this type, from the Phoenix to the Russian R-33, R-37, and the Fakur F-90B, perform best when flying at the highest possible altitude on their autopilots, which are enabled by an inertial measurement unit. Once this high-altitude cruise phase is completed, the missile executes a vertical dive towards the target to reach it as quickly as possible and maintain the highest possible speed, estimated at nearly Mach 3. A common misconception regarding missiles like the AIM-54 is that they are incapable of hitting maneuverable targets. The vertical dive maneuver enables the missile to achieve its very high end game speed, and it is equipped with a heavy warhead of approximately 60 kilograms, which is about three times the size of the warhead in the AMRAAM. These terminal phase capabilities make it well suited for engaging fighter type targets that are performing evasive maneuvers. The missile design itself is less common because few fighter jets have the kinematic capacity to carry such a heavy missile in sufficient numbers, and also because of the higher costs associated with its production. The use of the R-37 by Russian Sukhoi-35 superflanker during the Ukraine war illustrates how effective these types of long-range air-to-air missiles remain. They enable safe, long-distance shots that allow even older launch platforms like the F-14 to persist as a credible threat. Iran's order for Russian Sukhoi-35 likely means that the Fakur-90 missile will be developed further to equip this future primary fighter of Iran's Air Force. It was reported that under the project name Maksud, a long-range air-to-air missile is under development, which may have been the Fakur-90B itself or something more advanced. For Iran, it would be of the highest importance to equip their limited-size Sukhoi-35 fleet with such a long-range air-to-air missile to perform hit-and-run attacks from safe distances against more advanced 5th or even 6th generation fighters. High costs for importing large numbers of Russian R-37 air-to-air missile could hence be avoided by using the indigenous Fakur, 90B, or Magsud. The Superflanker's unique performance at very high altitudes, combined with its heavy payload capacity, certainly makes it a suitable platform to employ the Fakur 90B, or a next evolution, a Fakur 90C. Such a combo would equip the Iranian Air Force with its first game-changing capability since its acquisition of the F-14 Tomcat and its AIM-54 Phoenix missile in the 1970s. So that's all for today. If you liked it, give a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. It really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm and is a great support to the channel. The real enthusiast can become members and given access to exciting membership area material. Thanks for your support and motivation. See you next time.